All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the BT Neanderthal Hammered and Guide Revision 1, I guess you could say. Maybe there'll be more in the future about different things that I learned and stuff like that. But as far as the beginner steps and all that stuff, we're going to go over it today. I'm currently on Pluggy. Uh, I downloaded the single player Pluggy. Got some like items to sandbox with that way you guys can like uh see a few different types of builds it also makes it so i don't have to mule items over so it it'll it'll be good so this is a mod this is pluggy mod if you're not familiar with it it's pretty much the same exact thing except they give you stash space and you can reset skills and add and subtract your skills at any moment in time so it's a nice little single player mod and you have infinite stash space, which is also cool. There's multiple pages, etc. But, and then there's a shared and the main side. Oh, uh, main side. Shared and the main side. But anyways, first thing we're going to start off with is skills. So, uh, there's been a few people that are wondering how to build your Hammerdon. That's actually quite simple to build your Hammerdon. Um... You kind of just have to follow the synergies. We're just going to cover how to build a basic Hammerdon. And then after that, I'll show you what I like to build my Hammerdon as. So here we go. This is how you spec into a Hammerdon. Put one into Holy Bolt. Max out your Blessed Hammer. I am a level 90 Paladin, as you can see. Got my hands on a 90 Paladin. Over here we have one into Smite, one into Charge, one into Holy Bolt for now. The only reason is because that's for later. That will max. We'll max all that out later. Uh, you want one into prayer, one into cleansing, one into defiance. Max out vigor. The reason you want to max out vigor is because it has a synergy with blessed hammer, 14% magic damage per level. So that's pretty heavy. Put one into might. You put 20 into blessed aim. Twenty into concentration for this is your main uh, or that you're going to be using throughout your hammered in play, and the rest of your points go into holy shield. That's where all the rest of your points go into. So that is that is just the skill tree, and that's how you build a normal hammered in. That's that's the way you do do it. Just twenty to vigor, twenty to blessed aim, twenty to concentration. Twenty blessed hammer and the rest of the points you have into holy shield now you will max out at level 96 i believe so then you can have a little bit of a choice here and there but after you hit 96 you should be able to know what you're doing a little bit i would think um and you can kind of decide where you want to put them over here on the skill or the over here on the attribute tree uh, we have some decision making to do, but we need gear in order to do that first. And we're going to have to take a look at what the gear we have requires for strength, dexterity, and vitality is just life. We're going to need to look at and see what's the strength requirement for some of the armor that we're going to be needing to use. So let's take a look at that. So we have War Travelers. These are mirrored boots. These are upped War Travs. So they are a little, uh, they require a little bit more strength. Let's see. So we have some of these 84 strength, but just for the heck of it, we'll go over and add 163 strength. So we have enough strength to wear our boots now. Now these guys are still red because they require 35 decks. So let's add up to 35 decks real quick. There we go. 35 decks. And now let's put up our gear. So Enigma is the, it's like the basis for a lot of characters. Not all characters, but a lot of characters. It has teleport. And teleport is really hard to compete with because it is a crazy, crazy movement skill. You can go through walls, you can go through the map super, super fast, and it's just really effective. So Enigma 
works very well with the Hammerton. Or you're going to be teleporting next to your monsters and then attacking them while you're standing right next to them. So you can teleport right on top of them and cast your hammers. So, and then uh, we're going to just put on more of our gear here. So War Traps. We have a Herald of Zacharum or Haas. This one is a very nice shield. Um, typically you would put an Umrune in there. Again, I just gathered this gear for Pluggy. Just so I could uh, showcase some builds. Then it's usually people like to, to rock SOJs. Um, or one Bokathos and one SOJ. I personally like to rock two Bokathos rings because of the extra life. A Shaco, 141 Shaco with an Isrune in it. Obviously, you don't need the Isrune in it. That's just for 1% magic find. And then over here we have Hodo or Heart of the Oak rune word. Kovex Pulthol. Mage Fist. Very, very good piece of gear for casters. Regen mana, faster cast rate. Very, very good. Arachnid's Mesh, probably the best caster belt in the game because it adds to skills and 20% faster cast rate as well as adds to mana. So it has some pretty cool stuff on there. On the swap here, you pretty much always, almost every build, you're going to want to have CTA or Call to Arms with Spirit. Reason being is because Spirit will actually buff your CTA or your battle orders and battle command when you do buff them. So it's really helpful to have that. If you were to have like two paladin skills, it wouldn't affect the uh, plus, uh, it wouldn't affect the battle command or the battle orders. Um, so then we put a Mara's on. That's usually the, the go to amulet for this build. There's a paladin torch, an Annie charm, Geet's fortune, fast hit recovery. Grand Charms. Let's move over our charms here. Alright, now with all this stuff on, we have our skills set up. I actually have them all hotkeyed already, the way I like them. You can hotkey them however you want to. By going to your options menu, configure controls, and taking a look through your skills. And mapping them out the way you wish to. Um, over here, we're going to actually go for max block now. Now, we need to go out here, into the Frigid Highlands, buff ourselves. Reason being is because it's going to buff up our Holy Shield and some of our other skills that are going to synergize pretty well. So, over here we have uh, Holy Shield active now, buffing our defense. Now, the main thing that you're going to want to go for is 75% chance to block. That is really huge. So, we're just going to add a bunch of points. Now with each shield, it does change how many points of dexterity you will need. Herald of Zacharum or Haas is a very, very nice shield because it actually has a higher chance uh, of block by itself compared to some other shields as if you were going to wear spirit or something else like that. Um, so we're, again, we want to hit that 75% block rate or block chance. And there you go. And all the rest of your points, guys all the rest of your points you're going to want to put into vitality i did put the points into my strength before i put my annie charm and my paladin torch on and some of my other gear so my strength is buffed quite a bit and you can adjust that to your liking so that way you can you know you can take some of the strength out or whatever and then like add it on to vitality but this is not really a video about like trying to to worry about these things the balance of that it's just trying to get the basics down of how to build your paladin. So Enigma, Harlequin Crest, Shaco, Mara's Amulet or Mara's Kaleidoscope, and then Haas, Wartravs, Bokathos, Arachnid's Mesh, another Bokathos or SOJ. These can either be SOJ or Bokathos. Um, Mage Fist and Hodo on swap again the CTA and Spirit. And these are some of the options that you can have for for charms that you might want so like magic find here um 20 to life and faster recovery those are some options you can have more faster recovery or maybe something like you know paladin combat with life or something like that you can swap those out 
and we're paralleled in combat with life. I personally like this setup uh, with the small charms because I can add a little bit more magic fine. So if I had like, you know, eight of these small charms, I would use probably eight of those for boosting up my magic fine a little bit. Now, with this build, you are actually rocking, let's see, I think it's, take a look here. Yeah, 14k hammers. Not bad. Not bad at all. In solo, that's way more than enough. Um, or in solo play, like players one, that's way more than enough damage. I usually run like 14, or 12k, 11 to 12k hammers in solo play, and you pretty much steamroll through everything anyways. Um, some other options that you might have for building early are building. You might not want to go the magic fine route for some reason. Now you could put on sandstorm trick. That's an option. That's a very common option actually. It has vitality and strength, poison resist as well, and faster hit recovery on it. The faster hit recovery is the big difference there because not any of your actual gear has faster hit recovery when you're normally specking as a hammered in. And sometimes that could be a problem, sometimes not. Generally, if you're using Holy Shield, you don't get hit very often, so you don't get thrown into the faster hit recovery. Um, I do have the breakpoints here, if you guys really want to see it on the left side. As you can see, it's all there um, for various things. Now, this build that I have set up here is built for the 75 faster cast rate breakpoint and what hits it is your mage fist your arachnids mesh and your hodo it's a total of 80 so therefore it hits the 75 breakpoint 75 is probably my favorite build you can also push a little bit farther to 125 it's very expensive to build that way and it's not as survivable and it's a little tougher to play i will say it's cool because you get to teleport around a little bit faster and cast more hammers, but the actual DPS, and I've tested it before, the actual DPS you put out on monsters you're fighting, which is actually not as good as if you're going to use the 75 faster break, faster cast rate breakpoint. So, some of the other options you might want to put in, maybe lower your damage, lower your life a little bit, right? Um, you can throw out you know, maybe your maybe your Bocathos rings and throw on some magic fine rings. I don't think I actually have magic fine rings on my character at this moment. But just for example, let's say these were cut these were uh, magic fine rings, right? It's like bam, there you go, magic fine rings. You just added some magic fine. Whether it's a Naggle ring or blue ring, up to forty magic find on my U.S. East Hammerden. Uh, this ladder, I have a forty magic find and a. Uh, Bocathos or a 10 FCR depending if I want to swap back and forth from the 75 FCR build to the 125 but again that's just more details or maybe you could do something like this too like you could swap these out two FCR rings like say that these are two FCR rings you just replace the 20 FCR and you can put chances on you know stuff like that more magic find whatever you want to do guys just as long as you're hitting those breakpoints, you can. the whole world is yours. That's basically what's going on there. But typically when I'm running 75 FCR, I'm either really trying to tank, I'm really trying to buff uh, my damage, or I'm really trying to like, you know, do magic find. Or try my best to be all three, like kind of the well-rounded paladin build. Um, some other options here, so like... That's kind of like the basic one. That's kind of like the basic build for uh, Hammerden. Those are probably the only things that really change. Is uh, the boots that you wear for doing basic Hammerden. And maybe the rings, depending on what's going on. And you can switch out the charms and everything like that the way you want them to be. But um, usually when you're magic finding, you typically want to have around 200 to to 320 magic find 300 is good if you can be around three 300 magic find that's typically what i recommend i found a lot of good stuff with that with that build out and uh it works pretty well so just really quickly going over the mercenary here we have indario's visage fortitude and insight i like insight in a thresher it's my favorite base it has a faster attack 
speed uh, than some of the other bases. And Fortitude and Lacquer Plate, it worked out, e-bugged, and it rolled pretty well. 3,500 defense is pretty solid. And we found this in Ethereal Adario's Visage um, a few months ago, I think. And it rolled pretty nice. 10 Life Leech, 101 ED, and 30 Strength. And the Strength allows you to wear, or allows the Mercenary to wear some like higher quality armors and different things. It gives them more options. As well as Life Steal is pretty powerful. Another good option is Vampire Gaze with, um, with a, it has Life Steal on it and it has damage reduction. So if you're having a hard time with your Mercenary surviving, definitely try a Vampire Gaze. Or maybe even a fade like a treachery. Treachery and vamp gaze would probably do really well. Um, his damage reduction would be through the roof if he actually procced fade. Um, yeah, so you, there's options there. But I like fortitude, does good damage. And meditation is a must for teleporting forever. And that's really good. So that that's the mercenary. Really quick overview. Uh, the... The, the aura that you're looking for on the Act 2 Mercenary is Nightmare Defensive. It is Holy Freeze. So he'll activate it and you're teleporting around and basically what will happen is the monsters closing in on you are, uh, are being frozen. Even if they're immune to cold, they'll still get hit because Holy Freeze is an aura damage. So even if they're immune to cold, it still actually uh, freezes them. So it's kind of cool. Hey guys. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. That was just like the first part of it. There's quite a bit more that I go through. But I didn't really want to upload like a whole big video unless you guys really want it. Um, I'd rather upload it in parts. And yeah, guys, let me know what you think about it. And we'll upload the other parts if you guys, if you like it. So, let me know. Thank you, guys. You guys are beasts. I'll see you next time.